I have people, clients coming in tomorrow. I don't even know if I can give them electricity. Kavik River Camp serves as a remote fueling station on the north coast of Alaska. For Sue Akins, making sure that camp is up and running for her clients is vital to her business and her way of life. Get up on the perch. Anytime you can gain elevation, you're going to have a much better picture of things that are around you. And I'm scanning 20 miles out. Anything that looks weird. Something dark out there. the dogs up soon. 
and uh, keep the wind and the breeze on them and the flies off. Let's just get her done. I strive to live a simple lifestyle on the river doing the things I love. sharp and ready so I can go down river. I'm going to build a smokehouse. So starting there, I'm going to have to go find some nice posts and get the bark peeled off of them and some poles, start getting all my material. I'm so pressed for time because this is just a small part of what I have to get done. The thing is, I need to do this in a timely manner so I can move on to my next project, then my next project, and then my next project. This is better than any day job or city job. When I'm out there and I'm doing this, it is like I'm working, but I'm working for myself. I'm working towards my goals, not somebody else's goals. So I'm gonna head down river and look for a really good spot to cut posts and poles at. Not every place has the right kind of tree, so I got a couple places in mind to go look where they typically have really good poles. It's about seven miles down river, pretty close to where I'm building fish camp. It's a nice practical location. My time is limited right now because I'm trying to get ready for this fish run coming. The fish are already in the river and I'm missing out. As soon as I get this done, then I can get on to repairing my net and my fish wheel so I can get some fish. Got all my tools I need. Got my life jacket, I got my hammer and my chainsaw and my tools for debarking logs and my tools for the boat. So go down river, check some spots out, find some good posts for the smokehouse, and get started here. Well, every time I go out on the Tanana River or the Ninana River, I'm very apprehensive to safety because anything could happen out there. Gotta watch out for sweepers in the river. Uh, it's this thing that's sticking out, but there can be big logs sticking out of the bank that you can't see under the water. This river's so dangerous, like so many people with a ton of experience have ended up dead in this river, so I try to always think about that when I'm out here. This boat is great and everything, but it's getting older and it'd be easy to puncture something through it if you hit a log really hard. Lots of stuff in the water right now. It's high water, it's windy out. These are the kind of days you gotta be careful on the Tanana River. Oh, old camp right here. Well, you know what I think about when I see a little old structure like that? I think there was some smart old guy that used to camp down here because there was everything he needed. That's a nice looking spot here, maybe. All right, Tobias, load up, Tobias, come on. Tobias, out, good boy. The beavers have really been at work here, you know, and you can tell that this is some nice old seasoned wood. This is exactly what I'm looking for for smoking my fish. Looks like some good wood in here. A nice spot to spend the day debarking and getting these ready. What a place this is. This is my favorite place in the whole world. up for a little overnight trip. Several years ago, down at Fairbanks, I met a man who used to trap up in this country. And at that time, he was living in a little cabin that's several miles from here. When he left the last time, he told me that he didn't know he wasn't gonna ever come back. And he left a lot of things there. I'm going down there today, take a look around, see what I can find. If there's anything there I can salvage, I'll bring it back with me. since anybody was down there that I know of, so there's a good chance this stuff got strewn around on the ground. It would have been buried in the snow in the winter time. Now the snow's melted, I can go down there, take a look around. Who knows what I might find? Long way to go. The trick is gonna be finding the cabin. It's a long ways from here, and when I get down there, I'm gonna have to look around to figure out exactly where the place is. I don't have a map of the area. I don't have a compass. 
I just go by the sun and the landmarks. I'm familiar with the mountains, the rivers, and just looking at the sky. That's how I find my way around out here. There are no trails out here other than the ones the animals make. Sometimes you can follow a game trail for a little while and then it peters out. This here is where a bear's been digging up roots to eat. Looks like he's just been through here this spring. They like to eat roots, certain plants. They store their nutrients in the roots in the fall and they're still nutritious in the springtime. So when the bears come out of hibernation, that's one of the first things they do is they start digging up roots and eating them. That's why this time of year, even when I'm not planning on hunting any big game, I'll carry my rifle with me just in case. You never know when you might run into a grizzly out here. The sun looks like it's about as high as it's gonna get. It's midday now. One of the biggest obstacles to overcome getting my stuff out here is the transportation. If there's stuff that's already out here on the ground that I can make use of, well, I won't have to fly those things out myself. I'm gonna start looking for signs that somebody's been in the area. Where people cut firewood, that shows up for a long time. So if I see any stumps, I'm likely close to the cabin. Up ahead here, it looks like there's a lake. The trapper whose cabin I'm looking for, he had a cache on a lake, maybe a half mile or a mile from his cabin. This could be the lake, I don't know. Look at this. Stumps. Somebody cut this tree with an ax. Looks like it could be about 30 years old. More stumps. Here, look at this, that's the cache right there. That's the cache he told me about. Oh yeah, this is the place. This is definitely a cache, roughly 30 years old or so. It used to stand up on top of poles. There's just one left standing here. These metal cans, they're to stop animals from climbing up the pole. There's an ax stuck in the tree over here and a whole bunch of traps hanging up from this pole. It's gonna take some restoration, but that's a little Hudson Bay ax, really lightweight. I don't have one like that. Probably weighs about a pound and three quarters the head. Real useful for just carrying when you're traveling light. I'll take that. Bunch of traps here. But I'm not so much interested in these lake hole traps and they're a lot of weight to carry back. But it's good to know where they are. I might come back in the winter time when I could drag them on a sled. It's really interesting though, the stuff you find like this has been sitting around here for decades. This is a piece of aluminum that was used in printing a newspaper at the time that this place was built here. July 24th, 1982, I was 13 years old. Time's taken its toll on this cache. Most of the stuff here is really beyond use now. I got this one ax out of it. This will be useful to me. Most importantly, now that I know where the cache is, I ought to be able to find the cabin because the cabin's within a mile of here. I bet you the cabin's just up ahead. When you're familiar with the place and you know where the resources are, it's an easier life. all of these poles to go over there, girls. I'm pretty sure you know how to build one of these. Same thing I've been doing for years and years and years. After the hailstones recently harvested at Caribou and Camp, building a rack is essential to preserving the meat and the rest of their summer food supply. Well, I'm going to make a, a meat rack in any song. My wife wants a meat rack built, and uh, she'll use it for fish, she'll use it for seal, she'll use it for caribou. Well, Chip works on the... Uh, meat rack, I'm going to be with some of the girls um, just butchering and skinning and butchering this caribou and reducing this one and then taking the other one and doing the same thing. I'm going to make a couple tripods and I'm going to put a top piece and I'm going to put side pieces and then we'll go from there. We've had a lot of rains already today and what we don't need is wet meat. When you get water on the meat, it makes a real slick taste to it. Real, it's just not good. I'll stand it up. You gotta get them to go like this, dear. Maybe a little more. So far, I got a couple tripods up with my daughter Mary here. We got up a top piece, a nice smoothed off piece that we use for the tarp. It's getting a caribou for my mom while well, she comes in. Try not to get too much hairs on the meat. I just gotta keep hustling along and this should be done fairly quickly. I'm gonna go grab a tarp, I'm gonna go grab a little bit more rope for tying things on. I always try to save this, this is a real important part for us. When 
were in this area and my girls are around me, I always try to teach them and tell them why we do this, where we're going to do this, how we're going to do this. I'm not quite sure what the English word is, but it's Inupate Inukusate. It's our um, responsibility to our tribe, our culture, and our peoples. So I try to live that lifestyle and I try to let my daughters understand what my lifestyle is so they can say, you know, have a choice. I like my mom's lifestyle. Maybe I'll just, you know, follow hers. Well, I'm going to put the roof over top. I'm going to spread a tarp over this and I'm going to make it nice and tight and I'm going to hopefully lay over top of this right here.
I just try to think about all my big goals and that doing this work helps me get to that. Um, last post, yeah. So now I'm on to my next stage and then I'm just gonna start tying it all together with the planking. The planking for the sides of my smokehouse, it'll nail onto my post. Coming from a sawmill in my friend's zone, just bartered for it with them. I've never really done this before, so I'm kind of just doing it as I go, trying to make it as functionable as possible. I can taste that fish. So that's a reward to all this hard work. So the business of camping. Safety, security, fuel, rooms, and fun. I got the uh, generator going and testing to make sure I've got power to places I need it. The biggest, most important thing for me right now to check is going into the dining hall, or what will be the dining hall again, and checking for uh, my air to ground the radio and I just clip clip knock it a few times and the white light comes on and we're all good all right, so I can see right now I've got power in here this is the heartbeat of the generator it's telling me how it's running this part is running there you go if I have to call for help I mean smoke signals aren't gonna get me real far um, there is no standard telephone you can pick up I can't use my cell phone and get a signal it's air to ground radios. So this is Sue at Cavett River Camp, 122.9 on the eastern half of the North Slope. Just letting you know that I've got the generator running and I'm open for business again. Yeehaw, good to be back, guys. Done. I live simple and I live close to nature. I love nature, I love the wilderness. That's why I live in Alaska. After hearing of an abandoned trapping cabin near his camp, Glenn has hiked into the rugged terrain of the Brooks Range to gather any supplies that were left behind. Look at this. I found the creek. This is the creek he was talking about. Right here, just how he described it. Isn't that a beautiful creek? He said the cabin was right down on this bank of the creek with the mountains out in front. Another tree. Somebody cut this with an ax could have been this very axe that I found at the cache. This tree right here could have been used building the cabin. There it is. There it is. I can see it through the trees. Look at that. It's still standing. A lot of times a 40 year old cabin might not still be standing. It might have rotted and fallen down by now. There's the old wood pile. Somebody left without realizing they weren't coming back. They cut all that wood for nothing. Bow saw. Oh, beautiful. 36 inch bow saw. That's something I could use just as a spare. Takes the same length blades as my bow saw. Blades no good, it's all rusted up. But I've got blades. That one's a classic. It's got some history behind it. I wonder how many cords of firewood were cut with this saw. Hey, look there. Binoculars like a bear bit into them. wonder if they still work. Piece of junk. Bunch of bear hair here. It looks like a grizzly bear is rubbing up against this tree. And that's how a lot of the stuff gets strewn around. Bears come along when there's an old place like this and they just help themselves to it. Go inside, look around, throw stuff around. They're very destructive. You can see where a bear's been on this tree. Bear probably threw most of this stuff out in the yard. We'll look around some more. A couple of cast iron frying pans. So we need a little restoration, that's for sure. There's a lot of history behind this place. This cabin was originally built about 40 years ago. It's been out here a long time. Let's look inside. There's the old door. Hey! 
roof's all falling in on this side. The beam that supported the roof, it, it rotted and cracked right here. It's like an archaeological dig in here. Check this out. I've never had a radio up here. FM, AM, weather, air, police. Chili powder, but it's empty. Look at this. Can you believe it? Unwaxed, uh, not my type. A file. A little rusty, but that'll still cut steel. I can use that to sharpen that axe. Hey, what's this? A little hatchet. Let's see what's in here. It's heavy. It's definitely got something in it. Winchester. 30 out of 6, that's what I shoot. $12.60 a box. I pay over $40 a box now for ammo for my 30 out of 6. Full box, brand new, never used. That's going to be perfect. Ammunition is getting hard to come by these days. This is fine. This is definitely worth taking this ammo here. Found all this ammo. Some of it's for the same gun I shoot. This is great. Look at all this firewood he cut and never got to burn. Sat here for three decades. A little bit of it's gonna get used tonight. Got myself a new ax. Resurrected after three decades of disuse. A file. Spare bow saw handle couple hundred bucks worth of ammunition and had a really good time coming down and exploring this old cabin here. It's just fascinating to me to look at an old place like this and think about the things that happened here. Think about how somebody lived down here, spent a whole winter out here. They lived in the same area where I live in the Brooks Range and they lived a similar lifestyle. It was a long day walking down here looking around. I'm going to eat a little dry caribou meat for dinner, lie down right here, spend the night and head back up to my camp in the morning. So there's a lot of resources here, and I can make a good living, and I always have made a good living here. We busted our butt yesterday getting this meat dried up and the rack put up. They've busted their butts cleaning up camp, putting everything away. We got firewood, and I'm gonna take the kids out for a little pleasure cruise. We're heading down river. We see most of the birds in the flats here are settled down, so they must be nesting. There's hardly any of them flying. Um, it's a good indication that it's nesting time, so the least we can do is get a hold of some really good uh, eggs for now. And we can get a few dozen of them. We can put them away, and they're very large. We're pretty happy to have any eggs we get a hold of. Okay. Go ahead, ladies. Ooh, nice and warm. Listen, ladies, I'm going to let you walk this island. I'm going to go to the far side of the island with the boat and watch the boat, okay? Just Right now we're looking for um, some eggs. And if we probably go closest to the point towards those dried grasses, we might find some. When we uh, just go around the whole area, we look for raised up grasses or um, little dry patches where there's a few feathers here and there. That'll lead you towards, towards the eggs. Yeah, three, four, five, six. It's real flat, so it's easy for us to all separate. We can actually see there's no bears or wolves or anything else here, so it's all right for everybody to just go on ahead and run their separate ways without any um, firearm or real danger around. We're just gonna keep walking around the area, keep looking, looking out, and just have a good day. Goes in five 
These eggs here will probably carry us through pretty well until July, so I'm pretty happy with what we got. I really like being here. Man, that's looking good. Everybody back in the boat and let's go to the next island. I'm starting to get a little relief from the sun. For Jesse, building a smokehouse is key to storing the fish that will feed himself and his sled dogs. But with fish already in the river, there's little time to waste. Shit. My short-term goals and my long-term goals are basically wrapped around the same thing right now. Acquire some more top dogs, keep my breeding program going, keep my resources with my fish coming in, and spend more time at home with my dogs, so living on the river is a perfect lifestyle for that. on to get some structure to where I can get up higher now and get my ladder on it and then I'm going to run my cross pieces across which I'll put my roofing poles on. next piece is probably my heaviest piece that I had to get up high. I don't have the wall to use the ladder on like I did before, so I'm just going to have to muscle this thing up here. And so this is kind of a significant point for me because the best case scenario is it's not a problem at all. The worst case is it comes tumbling down and I have to figure it out again. Or, you know, hopefully I don't fall off the ladder with this on top of me. So what I'll do is try to get this here. in here. thing in the world to be doing. Like that. It's a lot more difficult than I would have ever imagined to live out here on the land. The rugged lifestyle, the challenge. I love all of that, you know. Yeah. You gotta be tough. You gotta be mentally tough. It's, it's more than that, too. You have to, like, be very intelligent about how you plan things and I'm going to put a tarp on the top for a roof. It will shed water nice with this nice slope. Then I'm going to be able to go get my dogs and finish setting up camp and get some rest. Figure out who you want to be, how you want to be, and then live it. And live it honestly. Anything I'm going to keep in here, I'll just move over into that corner because everything 
Can't do it. Time to change from winter living quarters back to summer dining hall. I've got people dropping out of the sky any minute and I'm nowhere near ready to be a business. This is how I keep the dining hall. It normally has tables. It's a dining hall. You come in, you sit down, I feed you food. But right now, during the winter, I take all of that out. I put four beds in here. If I pull out all the bells and whistles, I can house 83 at maximum in Kavik. Can't imagine wanting to, but I have done it. 33 is what I have it set up for right now. What's up here? You know, the accident cost me my health, somewhat of my sanity, could in the end cost me Cavett. I've lost over 300000 in potential revenue. That's how much money did not come in because I wasn't here. I'm just getting through it. What I can't do, I can't lift any of these. What I'm actually doing is just doing it anyways. There's nobody here to help me. And that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Have I gotten down on myself a few times? Yeah, this is shaky ground for me. This is a very physically demanding place. Winter is brutally hard here. If I can't make it in the summer, I sure as shit can't make it in the winter. I should be able to come in here and knock this shit out. But the body simply starting to tell me that, you know, I can't do everything on my own. the plane is coming in and he's gonna need fuel. This is Susan at Cavic. How's it going? Pretty good. We'll be there in just a couple minutes. Alrighty, um, I have not had a chance to work on the runway, so uh, take a low, slow flyover. You've got, it's a bumpy ride and Taxiway Alpha is uh, a little bit uh, ungroomed. Okay, thanks. Alrighty, see you soon. Fly safe. I was in the middle of trying to change the winter style dining hall into the summer functional dining hall when my buddy Dirk landed and needed fuel. So that's my first legitimate Sue's on camp fuel sale. And uh, he's just gonna get some hundred low lead. It's back to business, that's what it should be. Business, business, business. The business of keeping people safe, the business of giving them food, and the business of being in business. Hopefully when you come back the next time I will uh, have running water, showers, baked goods, sandwiches. I had a lot of cancellations. People heard that I got hurt. And when I couldn't answer rapidly, you know how people are. If you hear of anybody that needs a place to be, I keep it tiny numbers, I don't overcrowd. Keeping it six to 10 people a week. Now, do you want to deal with this today? Or? Well, I can pay you right away. You want okay. Do you want a card or do you want... Credit card or do you the want... The check is fine. I started out 300 in lost revenue, 300,000. That's a $500 sale, so now I'm 299,500 in the hole. I'm coming up. Every little bit's a little bit closer to being solvent. We can do the best that we can do. And then you just gotta go kick ass. We're all happy to be here. I'm certain of that. I'm tired and wet. Hey. Hungry. Let's go, Papa. Careful with those eggs. Boy, we have lots of eggs. We're gonna just eat by the grass, yeah? Yeah, we'll sort them out over there, so we'll store them for now. I saw a couple small ones. 255. 56. 257. 257. 157 eggs. Yeah. Yeah. We did real good for the first day. Huh? What we're going to do is we're cleaning them off. We're getting all the bird crap off of them. All the eggs that sink are perfect eggs. All the ones that float aren't, are going to have a little bit of bird in it. We busted butt getting the caribou chopped up and putting up a meat rack, and then we busted butt to get out there and get them eggs. Um, you ladies want to go over the rack and grab some of that dried caribou or half-dried caribou? We need a little more water, ladies. All that hard work picked off, 
But it wasn't hard work, it was fun, eh? Yeah, it's never hard work if it's hard fun. Right on, the eggs are almost done. Yeah, let's see. Wait, wait, wait. Pass me one, Dad. Every single one of my kids has taken part in gathering food here. And to me, that's all just really satisfying family work. We get to work together, we get to have a good time, and the best friends you usually have are the ones you work with. I like my kids. I like being around them. This is like the ultimate picnic, huh? We're here at home. We got fresh eggs, dried caribou, good old Kiwalik River behind us. This is awesome. Ever since I come to Ninana, everything's gotten better. North. You ready to go to camp, North? Yeah. I'm so stoked. This has been a long day. I just want to get these dogs in this boat and get down there, get them settled so I can get some rest and start fishing tomorrow. What are you doing, Rowdy Smalls? Just getting the last couple of my pups here. These dogs are about eight months old. I'm going to take them down to camp with me where I can work on training and letting them run around loose and just develop a bond with me. Pop, 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 pop. Tobias. Tobias, come on. Hey, hey. some of my best up and coming dogs so I really need to spend a lot of time working with them. Woo! Yeah buddies! Let's go for a boat ride! The biggest thing is going to be teaching these dogs how to ride in this boat. Come here! That's yet to be seen how that'll go. Take these guys out here is what it's all about. Bring up the next generation. And that's how you load a bunch of crazy young dogs into a boat. We're ready to go to camp now. Probably be camped out down there for the next few weeks. My goal is to be there as long as it takes to put up the fish that I need. Use this resource to the best of my advantage. Come on, Ron. <laughs> Amazing thing about those pups, they've never done any of this before yet, so they take to it right away. I raise all my dogs loose until they're five months old, just running around in a pack. Dogs need exercise, good food, and it's amazing what you'll get out of them. Sometimes life is fun, sometimes life is work. place like this, doing things like this, you know, it's hard to not think about how lucky I am to have found a lifestyle like this. It's just a real blessing to end up here.